Hello and welcome. Today, we're diving deep into climb gradient in aviation, why it matters for safe departures, where it's used, how to calculate it, the key influencing factors, what happens when things go wrong, and real-world examples. Plus, we'll explore some extra insights pilots and dispatchers should know. What is climb gradient? Climb gradient represents the vertical distance climbed per unit of horizontal distance over the ground. It's commonly expressed as feet per nautical mile, or as a percentage slope. It describes the geometric slope of the climb path, not the time-based climb rate. For instance, if an aircraft climbs 300 feet for every nautical mile, that's a climb gradient of 300 feet per nautical mile, or about 4.9%. Why does climb gradient matter? The standard climb gradient used in instrument departure design is 200 feet per nautical mile based on standard for terminal instrument procedures criteria. This slope provides approximately 48 feet of obstacle clearance at one nautical mile from the departure end of runway. However, standard instrument departureists and obstacle departure procedures sometimes require higher gradients, up to 500 feet per nautical mile or more, due to terrain, obstacles, or ATC constraints. These steeper climb requirements must be adhered to by the pilot or approved for procedure design. This matters because if pilots cannot meet the required climb performance, they risk inadequate terrain or obstacle clearance, non-compliance with ATC or regulations, or inability to safely fly a departure procedure. Where is climb gradient used? Standard instrument departures and obstacle departure procedures routinely specify climb gradient requirements. These are mandatory when included in ATC clearance. Diverse departures assume at least 200 feet per nautical mile, unless a higher gradient is published due to obstacles. Procedure design criteria use climb gradients to ensure safe obstacle clearance. Climb gradient performance is also considered during certification, particularly in one engine in operative scenarios and second or third segment climb tests. Though certification uses net or gross performance, operators must ensure aircraft can meet published gradients. How is climb gradient calculated? To calculate climb gradient in feet per nautical mile or percent, start with the required geometry obstacle elevation minus runway elevation, divided by horizontal distance from runway end to obstacle. For obstacle purposes, FAA provides formula CG equals to obstacle minus elevation divided by distance. Percent gradient can also be converted from feet per nautical mile. Percent gradient is equals to feet per nautical mile divided by 60.76. To figure vertical speed, needed rate of climb is equals to ground speed in knot divided by 60 multiplied by required feet per minute. For example, with a ground speed of 150 knots and required climb gradient of 276 feet per nautical mile, you need approximately 690 feet per minute. Factors affecting climb gradient. Several factors influence climb gradient performance. Aircraft weight. Heavier weight reduces climb capability, decreasing gradient potential. Engine power. Higher thrust output from more powerful engines yields higher gradient. Engine out performance is critical for OEI compliance. Atmospheric conditions. High temperature, high altitude, and low air density degrade engine and aerodynamic performance, reducing climb gradient. Ground speed, affected by headwinds or tailwinds. For the same climb rate, a headwind lowers ground speed, meaning a steeper gradient. Conversely, tailwinds raise ground speed, increasing required climb rate. Consequences of miscalculation. If a climb gradient is calculated incorrectly or the pilot fails to meet the published requirement, obstacle clearance may be compromised, placing the aircraft at risk. Procedural or regulatory non-compliance. 
Pilots may violate charted departure procedure, climb requirements, leading to possible rejection of departure or safety infringements. Performance planning errors, overestimation of climbability, can result in excessive weight or insufficient margins, particularly in hot temperature and high elevation scenarios. In OEI conditions, failing to meet criterion may lead to regulatory nonconformance or inability to execute contingency procedures. Real-world examples. Let's look at a real SID example, the McCall 1 Foxtrot SID at Istanbul Airport. It requires a 5.0% climb gradient along to SID. At a ground speed of 150 knots, a pilot must climb at roughly 760 feet per minute, equivalent to about 304 feet per nautical mile. FAA criteria state that climb gradients above 500 feet per nautical mile require special approval through flight standards. Many airport procedures contain segments requiring up to 600 feet per nautical mile. Additional insights. Best angle speed, VX, and best rate speed, VY. VX gives maximum climb gradient, altitude per distance, and is slower than VY, which gives maximum climb rate, altitude per time. VX is used when obstacle clearance is critical. VY is used for efficient climb to cruise altitude. Net versus gross climb gradient. Certification uses gross performance. Operators often apply small deductions to obtain net climb capability. Pilots should base performance planning on net when flying actual departures. 40 to 1 obstacle clearance surface. Terminal instrument procedures use a 40 to 1 slope, which is approximately 152 feet per nautical mile, beyond runway end as baseline. Standard 200 feet per nautical mile gradient gives buffer above the slope. Low close-in obstacles within one nautical mile and penetrating the 40 to 1 surface may require steeper published gradients. Summary and call to action. Climb gradient expresses the geometry of climb, vertical altitude gain per horizontal mile or percent slope, not vertical speed. The standard climb gradient for departures is 200 feet per nautical mile, but many SID or ODP specify higher values for safety. Calculate it using altitude difference over distance, or convert to vertical speed using ground speed. Performance is influenced by aircraft weight, engine thrust, atmospheric conditions, and wind. Incorrect gradient calculations or inability to meet minimums can compromise obstacle clearance, violate procedure, and threaten safety. Remember VX and VY trade-offs, net and gross gradient, and FAA TERP's 40 to 1 surface criteria. Thanks for watching. If you're a pilot or aviation professional, understanding climb gradient is essential for safe departures. Hit like if you found this useful and subscribe for more performance-focused aviation content.